Pineapples. Each comes from a plant that will produce more than 200 flowers, and one third of them are produced on the volcanic island archipelago of Hawaii. These fascinating fruits divide the linguistic world into two camps. One camp uses words like pina, pineapple, and penapuru, all of which come from Christopher Columbus, who called the fruits pina de indus, or pine cone of the Indians, because of its resemblance to the cones of the European pine tree, despite the fact that pineapples come from South America. The other camp uses the word ananas, and covers a large portion of the Indo-European languages. And it's this word, ananas, that links together languages as disparate as Russian, French, and Punjabi, that we're going to focus on today. Welcome to Deltas, a podcast about our collective past and present world. Ananas is a word that derives from the Tapian language group, a group of about 70 languages spoken in South America by the Tapi people and other tribes in the region south of the Amazon River. The tribes were most widespread along the coastline of what is now southeastern Brazil. Now, we're going to zoom in on one of these 70 languages called Old or Classical Tapi, as it demonstrates just how significant Tapi cultural contributions are Old Tapi is extinct today, but it has a linguistic heritage dating back thousands of years and even a written history from the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. When the Europeans arrived in the 16th century, there was little to no written form of Tapi, and none of the new arrivals could speak Tapi, so a group of Jesuit priests began to systematise the grammar of the language and, as a part of this effort, introduce a system of writing down Tapi. Over the next century, this writing system was gradually adopted by the locals and those who settled there, but it was still heavily reliant on the priests who had created it. However, in 1759, all Jesuits were expelled from Brazil, and their writing system barely held on. Without a way of preserving the language in written form, and with its main advocates gone, the number of old Tuppy speakers went into serious decline. Old Tuppy splintered into and was gradually replaced by two distinct lingua francas, Tuppy Austral in the south and Tuppy Namba around the Amazon basin. And this is where the story of Old Tuppy connects with the story of our world in the present, because Tuppy Namba survived, eventually morphing into Nyongatu, a language still spoken today and a direct linguistic descendant of the language that gave half of us our word for pineapple. Ananas. Nihangatu has around 19,000 speakers today, which puts it firmly in the severely endangered category for languages. Mostly located in Colombia, Venezuela and Brazil, the last of which even has Nihangatu as an official language alongside Portuguese in its municipality of São Gabriel de Cachoeira. So next time you're carving up a pineapple or sipping a pina colada, Spare a thought for the Tuppy people. Spare a thought for the linguistic connections you share with them and with everyone else all across the world. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.